I'm going to go back to the proper thing. I preached out of Jeremiah 8. Jeremiah 8, 1 through 3. Jeremiah 8, 1 that the Lord wanted to make us another vessel. Um, but I also, um, Jeremiah 17 is just as imperative, but the Lord told me to minister 18 first, so I'm coming back for 17. And I want to um, deal with the word out of Jeremiah 17, uh, verses 5 through 10. And I'm going to deal with trusting God. I'm going to deal with trust, and I'm going to deal with the blessings connected to trusting God and the curses connected to not trusting God. Amen. Trust carries great ramification simply because we are blessed and literally cursed based off of living a life where we trust or don't trust God. Amen. And Jeremiah breaks this down um, for us and so I believe that there's some things here that are going to help us today. Amen. Um, the Lord is constantly putting us in positions, and I'm going to talk about it, to fortify and gain in us a position of trust where we trust God. Because it's so important to any exchange and any ministry God wants to give us. We, he, his hand is cut off to the degree we don't trust him. Trust almost in a sense ties God's hands where he can't bless and release like he desires to. And so I want to deal with and teach on the trusting God on this morning. And I believe that it's going to be a blessing. Amen. And, and really help us to discern, do we trust God or, or don't we trust God? I believe it's imperative for us to be able to discern whether we trust God or not. Amen. And Jeremiah makes it clear that trusting God is not as easy, easily recognizable as many people take for granted that it is. And it's not just going to church. It's not just even worship and praise. It's deeper than that. And Jeremiah helps us um, 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 with that. So Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 5. I'm going to read verses 5 through 9. We're going to read that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then we'll jump into what thus saith the Lord. Jeremiah 17, verse number 5. says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth or departs, from the Lord for he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes or cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited now see that he's talking about trust and he's talking about trusting man verse 7 blessed is the man that trusts or trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Now, verse number nine almost seems like he changes subjects, but he's actually talking about whether we, uh, uh, where we're putting our trust. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He said, your, your, our biggest deceiver is our heart. Our heart will lie to us faster than a liar will lie to us. I wish I could get a witness up in here. Amen. We, we know our heart that told us some lies that then took us down some paths with some people that we would have never went had we not believed the lie that our heart told us. Father, we thank you. And we bless you right now in the name of Jesus. 
We thank you for the word of God that comes quick and powerfully. Releases the life necessary for breakthrough in the house. God, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated in the house of God. Listen, I want to share some things with you. Drop some principles. Teach as much as the Lord allows um, on today. And I want to I start right from the beginning. I believe this is a bombshell if you really think about what I'm about to say. And you really kind of um, um, mentally uh, digest what I'm about to say. Listen and listen closely. There's no believing God without trusting God. I'm going to say that again. There's no believing God without trusting God. Belief literally isn't belief without trust in who or what we believe in. Body following what I'm saying. Where there is a lack of trust, there is also a lack of belief. The reason why Israel died in the wilderness after being delivered out of Egypt is because they did not trust God. Amen? How do we know they didn't trust God? Because they murmured and complaining. Murmuring and complaining is 100% of the time the fruit of a lack of trust. We'll only complain if we don't trust. We'll only murmur if we what? Don't trust. So Israel was delivered by a God they didn't even believe in. I want y'all to think about what I just said. They saw this God work 10 miracles to bring them out. And although they knew he delivered them, they did not believe in them. That's why they never entered into God's promise. Because being delivered don't necessarily give you belief. You can be delivered and never trust God. Amen. So literally their lack of trust was the fruit of a lack of belief. Amen. Anytime trust is missing, glory be to God. Belief is compromised. That's why you can never a relationship where the, where the two people don't trust each other, where one person doesn't trust the other, will not work. It won't work until you deal with the trust issue. No matter how good it goes uh, for a while, that trust will always raise up a question. It will always raise up a complaint. It will always raise up a dissatisfaction. We cannot uh, completely, amen, be in relationship with anyone or anything we do not trust. Amen. What is trust? Amen. Did y'all hear what I just said before I move on? We cannot be in any significant relationship with anyone we do not trust. Christianity is a call to be in relationship with God. We cannot be in a relationship with a God we do not trust. Amen. Trust is relying on the integrity, strength, and ability of someone else. I'm going to say that again. Trust is relying on the integrity, the strength, and the ability of someone else. When I am trusting God, I am relying on God's integrity, ability, and his strength. Now, the key is, usually I will not rely on, on God's integrity, strength, and ability until I'm placed in a situation where I cannot rely on my own, what? Strength and ability. It's only in situations where we can say, I don't know what to do, and we still have peace that we know we trust God. It's why? Because now I'm relying on his ability, I'm relying on his integrity, and I'm relying on his strength. It's only when we've been in situations where we've said, I've tried everything I know to do, and it only gets worse, and we still have peace and confidence that it's going to end for the better for us, do we know we trust God? Why? Because I'm now relying on his integrity, 
strength, and ability. Trust is a, tr is a child of trial. Anytime you're in, tr in trial, God is trying to have you conceive trust. Glory be to God. Me and you will never have trust without a significant trial. Trial is necessary because that's how we birth trust in God. The reason why I know I'm not going to die in this fire. Because I was in a burning one before. And God brought me out on the other side. The reason why I know I'm not going to drown in this thing that is over my head. Is because I was in a situation that was over my head. And he did not leave me there. But the Lord took me up. The reason why I know I'm going to be alright when people drown drop me is because I was in a situation where people drop me and when my mother and father forsook me the Lord took me up I do not learn trust without a trial if you me and you trust God we had a baby with trial trust is trials child hallelujah Anybody ever been through something lately? Amen. And without trust being conceived by way of trial, our belief cannot be legitimized. We must trust God in order to have legitimate belief. Amen. I need somebody to confess I trust God. Come on, I dare you to decree out your mouth I trust God. Amen. That's has to be our confession. We, we trust God. Why is it necessary that we have a child called trust with a mother called trial? Why is that necessary? Because if we do not trust God, we will trust in man. There is no, that, it's either A or B. Either I'll trust God or I'll trust in man, but there is no other option. There is no in-between. Even the people that say, I don't trust in man. If they don't trust in God, trust in man. Because not trusting in people came from man. When God said, when God said you will either trust man or trust God, trust man or God is your source. Trust man or God is the initiator. Trust man or God as the one who sets the course. Trust man or, God, man or God as the one who lays the foundation, who initiates. Amen. Glory be to God. If I say I don't trust God, I don't necessarily trust God, but I don't, I don't trust man to tell me about God. I only trust God. Then you're trusting man because that is a man's idea. Any, when he's talking about trusting man, he's talking about living your life based off of man's ideas and not God's. When we trust God, and this is going to sound crazy to you, we will trust people. Because my trust in you is based off of my trust in him. In other words, even if you stab me in the back, it's going to lead to me being promoted. So I can trust that God, even if he allows you to betray me, is going to bless me and cause my enemies to be my footstool. Amen? So, so, so I want you to understand it. That don't mean we just reject what God gives us through man to say we don't trust man. Because God, when he's ready to raise us up, perfect us and mature us, he'll send some apostles. What is that? Those are men. He'll send some prophets. He'll send some evangelists. He'll send some pastors. He'll send some teachers. God so loved the world that he sent a man. Anytime that we have a prayer, God, nine times out of ten, answers prayers through people. I don't trust in man. I don't trust in God. You don't trust. No, that's still man because you're trying to use your idea of trusting in man and your idea of trusting in God. And you don't have a biblical reference to base your, base your actions. You're still trusting in man because you're trusting in your definition. Instead of revelation. We need revelation from the scripture. Watch this now. Amen. Everybody follow what I'm saying? So, so, so literally, 
When we trust in man, what's the problem? If I'm not trusting in God, I will trust in man. What's the problem with trusting in man? I'll place myself under a curse. Amen? We place ourselves under a curse when we trust in man. It's either or or. If we trust in man, we place ourselves under a curse. If we trust in God, we place ourselves under a blessing. So we're either blessed or cursed off of who we place our trust in. Now, after the Lord breaks this down, if you're paying attention to the dialogue in Jeremiah 17, he says in verse number 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? In other words, he said, don't you take for granted that you trust God because your heart is deceitful. He said, no, you base whether you trust God or not off of the word. Because you might feel like you do, but, but your feeling don't align with God's word that does. So he said, he said, now no, but when we're talking about this topic called trust, I need you to understand that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I don't think no person has ever lied to us more than our heart has. Amen. I don't think we've been tricked or duped by anybody else more than we've been tricked and duped by our own heart. Amen? Who can know it? Now watch this now. So I'm going to deal with the trust of God. Now watch this. I'm going to deal with the cursing and I'm going to deal with the blessing and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you uh, how they lay side by side. Why? So we can discern. I need you to be, to come out of this being able to discern. Do I trust in man or do I trust in God? We're not coming after people to condemn people, but we need to know, Adam, where are you? We always need to be able to locate ourselves in the realm of the spirit. God gives us revelation. Glory be to God. He gives us that revelation literally as a means of finding out where we are so we can move into where he's called us to be or we can hold fast to where we are. Amen. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some revelations about the characteristics of somebody who trusts in man and the characteristics of someone who trusts in God and then also the results of that. What happens? What does it look like? Because you're going to live out the fruit of it immediately. If you're trusting in man, you're going to see certain things. If you're trusting in God, you're going to see certain things right now. As I'm saying them, you'll see them in your life based on who you trust. The word is going to come as a mirror. Y'all following what I'm saying? Amen? So Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 5. Watch this now. <clears throat> Cursed be the man that trusts in man, makes flesh his arm, and whose heart, what? From the Lord. So first of all, two characteristics. When we trust in man, we make flesh our arm. And our heart departs from the Lord. Those are the first two characteristics. If I'm trusting in man, two characteristics that I'll see right away. I'll make flesh my arm and my heart will depart from the Lord. And I'm going to break those two. Now, everybody say this is word. Amen. We ain't trying to, I'm not trying to give you no hocus pocus. I'm not trying to give you, I'm trying to give you a revelation of the word of God. Amen. Number one, we make flesh what? The arm is how we reach for stuff. The arm is how I reach out to grab things. The arm is how I stretch to get what it is that I see in front of me. To make flesh our arm is to allow man to define what we're supposed to be reaching for in life. Follow me. Is to allow man to tell us what we're supposed to be paying our dues for. What we're supposed to be grinding for. What we're supposed to be getting up in the morning for. What we're supposed to be sacrificing for. What we're supposed to be obtaining. How we're supposed to be living. Come on. It, it, now, when, when I make flesh my arm, I'm reaching for consumerism. 
What does that mean? There are commercials of things that I saw, and when I saw the commercial, I want it, and so now I am making a part of my life reaching for what it is that I saw on a commercial. It is living lavish. It's obtaining things. It's having a certain persona. It's living with a certain swag. It's I'm reaching for these things, but the problem is the source of what I'm reaching for does not come from God it comes from man and therefore when man defines what I spend my life reaching for when I make flesh my arm I come under a curse it's not the question of what we're reaching for all of us are reaching for something the question is who told us to reach for it What is the source of what we're reaching for? We're reaching for things in our family. But who told you to reach for that? The devil will tell you to reach for stuff just like God will. Amen. The devil tell you, man, reach for them to have education. Man, reach for them to be successful. Reach for them to get paid. And God will tell you, reach to raise up servants. Reach to raise up prophets. Reach to raise up sanctified men and women of God who will love God. The question is, who gave us our reach? Amen. The devil's always trying to tell us what to reach for. Because he knows if he could tell us what to reach for, it brings us under a curse. You know why? Because we're supposed to be reaching for God. Come on. We're supposed to be reaching for his presence. We're supposed to be reaching for his will. We're supposed to be reaching for his purpose. We're supposed to be reaching for his truth. Do you understand? That's what we're reaching for. For. Amen. That's when we're blessed. Uh, you know why people are cursed that allow men to define what they reach for? It was a verse that we quoted in our confessions. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. That's the reason why men are cursed who allow man to tell them what to reach for. In Jeremiah 29 and 13 it says and you shall seek me. Watch this. And do what? When you shall With all your, God only allows to find him those that seek him. You shall seek me, follow this, and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. If you're not seeking God, you're not finding God. That's what that scripture is saying. In other words, can we put it this way? If we're not reaching for God, we're not going to reach God. Only those who are reaching for God will actually reach God. That's why you're cursed if you make flesh your arm because you'll never reach God. Because man has told you what to reach for when God will only allow those to reach him who are reaching for him. And so those who allow man to tell them what to reach for will never have a significant relationship with God. They'll never walk in God's will. They'll never never bear the fruit of the kingdom they'll never overcome sin struggle they'll never walk in true breakthrough they'll never walk in true liberty why because you will not reach him because you're not reaching for him you reaching for likes you reaching for stardom you reaching for stuff you reaching for money and God said curse you are because if you ain't reaching for me you'll never reach me you'll just come to church and experience me once a week Said, curse is every man who makes flesh his arm. Why are you reaching for what you're reaching for? Anytime we have to ask God, where are you? That means we ain't reaching for God. We ain't never got to ask God where, he, where, where we are. God asked, that's a question God asked man. That's not a question that man asked God. Adam didn't ask God where he was. He knew where God was. Nearby, that's why he ran. When we're asking God, where are you? We ain't reaching. Call on me, and I shall answer thee, and I'll show you great and mighty things. 
that thou knowest not. What are you reaching for? Amen. What are you reaching for? Because what we're reaching for is based on what God will. Ne- we're not going to bump up on God. We're not going to stumble on God. We're not going to fit God in our schedule and find God. We're going to have to have an intentional seeking of God. We're going to have to have an intentional pursuit of God. We're going to have to have an intentional drive for God. You shall seek me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. I refuse to be found by people who ain't looking. That's why God said, that's why the enemy wants you looking for stuff. That's why the enemy wants you reaching for stuff. Because he knows I can curse you. You'll never get God with that type of seeking. You'll never get God with that down or that down or low level worship. I am a God that shows up for those that seek me with all of their heart. We can't reach a God we're not reaching for. So they would tell you, David, you cannot reach a God you're not reaching for. Number one, you know you're trusting in man if you're not reaching for God. How do I know? Am I, am I trusting in man or am I trusting in God? What you reaching for and who told you to reach for it? That's number one. You figure out. Now, on the flip side is the blessing. I'm going to skip. I'm going to go cursing because for every curse, there's an opposite blessing and vice versa. So the blessing for the curse of of, of making flesh your arm, also you make flesh your arm by only reaching what you think you can reach with your own resources. We make flesh our arm when we base whether or not we can buy it off of our bank account. We make flesh our arm when we base whether or not we can do it based off of our education. We make flesh our arm when we allow man to diagnose our problems and tell us how to solve them by managing them. Do you understand the reason why people are in the psychological, emotional, and mental condition they're in is because they're making flesh their arm. If I'm going to get this solved, I have to have a man to to, to help me. and, and, And all it does is bring me into a lifelong bondage. See, when God is ready for us to reach something, he says, you don't make flesh your arm, you make prayer your arm. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Glory be to God. And I'm going to show it to you in a minute. As a matter of fact, glory be to God. Before I do that, let me show you the blessing, and I'm going to show it to you. Uh, look at David, tell you, David, make prayer your arm. How do you know what you're reaching? Because what I've been praying for. Y'all don't understand where we're going and what we're grabbing because my arm is my prayer. My arm is my intercession. My arm, because that's me trusting in who? God, pray for everything. Everything. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8. Blessed is that man that trusteth in the Lord. This is the flip version. He's blessed. Whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a what? Where? Planted by waters. He shall be like a tree planted by waters. When we trust in God, the first thing he does is put us in the right place. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant you by the river of living water. God makes sure that those who trust him are put in the right place. He'll put you where you don't have to do much to have much. I wish I could talk up in here. In other words, he'll place you in a position Position where opportunities are flowing. I'll put you by the river of living water. I'm just going to put you in the right place. And what everybody else is reaching for will flow to you. What everybody else is reaching for, because you're blessed. I know they're reaching for it, but all you got to do is stay in the right spot. I'm going to put you in a sweet spot. I'm going to put you in a place where you meet the right people at the right time. I'm going to put you in a place where you go in into the business uh, right when the business is about to boom.
boom I'm going to put you in the right place uh, where you connect with the right thing uh, at the right time uh, where opportunities are flowing where favor is flowing uh, where doors are flowing uh, where blessing is flowing uh, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord because uh, he just ends up in the right place uh, at the right time uh, I know you're waiting uh, on the water to be troubled uh, but I stay planted uh, by the water that's troubled uh, so it can't trouble the waters can't be troubled without knocking on the door of my life uh, I'm always around when the waters are troubled look at neighbor, tell your neighbor right place Folks are giving their whole life to reach what's flowing to you. I'm going to plant you. I'm going to put you in a good spot. I'm going to give you a business niche ain't nobody got. I'm going to show you a niche to work. Ain't nobody working. I'm going to give you a favor that ain't nobody else got. I'm going to put you in the right spot. I know, uh, I know, Marlene, you got a hair salon like everybody else's, but your hair salon is going to be in the right spot. I'm going to plant it in the right spot, and I'm going to give you a niche that ain't nobody working. I don't know, it's just going to be silky. I don't know. It's just going to be smooth. There's going to be something about the blowout. It's going to be something about the press, but there's going to be something about you that other people are reaching for that clientele that is just flowing into your life I know everybody else is catering you ain't hear what I'm saying but Veronica your catering is different because you're planted by the rivers of living water and what everybody else is trying to get just flows to you you have Asians you have Africans you have Englishmen you have every nation Hispanics and Caucasians because you're by the river because you're by the river of living water I'm just going to wake you up at 2am with an idea you're going to think you can't sleep when it's, be it's because the river's flowing I'm going to put you in the right spot at the right time and it's just going to flow to you what other people are doing what Curse because they're doing this and they ain't got it. And you just stay and plant it and it's flowing. Whew. I want that blessing right there. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I want that blessing. How in the world am I going to get the blessing of that water because I'm thirsty? No, 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 no. How am I going to get the blessing of that water? I'm thirsty. And I want that water. Didn't I tell you that, we, that our reach is through prayer? You know what I do? I start praying. Come here, Elder Johnson. Huh, now behind you. I start praying. And when I start praying, God starts reaching. Grab my hand. And we pray together. And I turn and just play sideways. Just, just right there. And I still can't reach it, but I keep praying. Come here, Pastor Johnson. Come on, come on, come on. I keep praying. And God keeps reaching. Stuff I can't reach yet. Somebody shout, keep praying. I know you ain't got it yet. I know it ain't happened yet. But as long as you keep praying, God's arms are stretched out. And can't nobody turn it back. I know it ain't happened yet. But you keep on praying. Just stay where you are. This is the right spot. Just stay where you are. You're in the right place. Just do what God told you to do. You're there. Don't quit. Don't turn around. Stay planted where you are. And you keep on praying. Come here, Tony. I'm still praying. Glory be to God. And God is extending my reach. Glory be to God. Come Come on, come on, come on, Rodney, come on. He's still extending my reach. Come on, Sam, come on. He's still extending my reach. Some of you are closer than you realize right now to the blessing of God in your life. Stay planted and stay prayered up. For he shall plant you by rivers of living water. I want that water. Let me keep on praying. Glory be to God. Come on, Quentin, could you go? I'm reaching. Every time you pray and you reach it. Every time you pray and you stretch it. Every time you're praying you're putting your hand out and I'm here. Glory be to God and I'm almost there. I didn't have to move because I'm planted. I trust God. I trust God that if I pray here he'll move there. I trust God that if I get on my knees God's hand will stretch out on my behalf. I trust God that if I fast 
he'll move. I keep praying. I keep praying. Come on, TJ. Somebody shout this. That's Jeremiah's arm. Boy, I didn't know your arm was that long. It ain't mine, it's gone. That daddy arm. That big papa arm. That my father's arm. And then I reach. Then I reach and go ahead and give it to him. Look at here, I got it. But I ain't got it yet. Because it has to be passed along all the prayers. So God... God won't forget not one prayer. Your prayers will come up as a memorial before God. I wonder if there's some Cornelius's act 10 folk in the house that recognize that Cornelius was visited by God, sent by Peter, because his prayers and his giving came up as a memorial. God remember when I prayed Saturday morning. God remember when I prayed Monday night. God remember when I fasted on Wednesday. God remember when I got on the firewall. God remember when I came to six o'clock prayer. Go ahead and pass it. Look at God. Somebody shout it's coming. Somebody shout it's coming. And I didn't have to move much to get it. I got much without moving much. Because I just trust God. And the good news is, you shall stretch forth your roots. You read the rest of it. I am, God, I'm getting ahead of myself. But the Bible says that those that trust in the Lord shall spread out their roots in all different directions. So that what that means is, that's a root. Anytime I need that, I can already reach that. Now let me turn this direction and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need you you to move and begin to set another route. Y'all missing it. Don't do it. I ain't got enough breath to do it. Somebody shout, you got it. You got it. Somebody shout, right place. Come on, thank y'all so much. When you're blessed, what others are reaching for flows to you. Because when you trust God, you don't have to rely on your wingspan. You come under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. And you begin to get through being planted. Tell you they would stop, stop moving so easy. You get through being planted. Now, I'm going to pray and I'm going to be planted in this prayer assignment. I'm going to serve and I'm going to serve. I'm going to stay planted. I'm going to believe and I'm going to stay planted. Trust will allow you to be planted. One of the first characteristics of trust is you ain't flip-flopping. Until you get what it is you got planted there for. You don't have to move much to get much. You're about to enter into a season where you don't have to move much to get much. God is going to plant you by your trust. Blessed is the man that trusts in God. He shall be like a tree. What? Planted. If God planted me here, my promise is here. If God planted me here, my blessing is here. If God planted me here, my breakthrough is here. He's going to put you in the right place. At the right time. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Matthew 6 verse 33 says this, and I'm going to move to the next point. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his what? In other words, reach first for the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be what? You can reach things without reaching God, but you can't reach God without reaching things. I'm going to say that again. You can reach things without reaching God, but you can't reach God without reaching. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things. If I reach the kingdom, 
I will reach things. I can't get God without getting things. Some things are going to show up. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I ain't falling for that. I just want your face and not your hand. No, I want your face and your hand. Glory be to God. When I actually meet a man, after I say hello to their face, I, the next thing I do is put out my hand. I want your face so I can get your hand. Let's shake on it. Put your blessing on me. Let me humble myself under your mighty hand so you can put your hand on my life. The next thing we do after we meet, come on. I, if I see a brother right now, come on, right now, quitting, come on. If I see you right now, if I see your face, what up? That's the, but the next thing we do is give me your hand. And after you give me your hand, you're going to give me what's in your bosom. Go ahead and hear what I'm saying. The Lord did not just give me his face. He gave me his hand and his bosom. Go ahead and hear what I'm saying. There's supply for me. There's blessing for me. There's increase for me. If I got his face, I got his hand. Let me tell you, I want his hand too. You know, man, it says, God, just give me your face. What are we going to do? Just stand up and look at each other with our hands behind our back? You're trying, you're, you're trying to be too deep. Amen? No, bro, give me your hand. Don't leave me hanging. Amen? Ain't nothing worse than being left hanging. You got to act like you was doing something else. I don't learn how to do it good. I'll be real smooth with it. You would never know. God don't leave us like that. If I got his face, I got his what? Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Jeremiah 17 verse 5. So we're going back to the curse. How do I know whether I trust in man? Number one, I make flesh my arm. Right? If I'm trusting in God, I know how to hold the right place. I ain't moving. See, sometimes you're in the right place and ain't nothing happening. Sometimes you're in the right place and ain't no door being open, but you got to know I'm in the right place. Amen. Jeremiah 17 verse 5 says, Curse be the man that do what? Trust in man and make his flesh his arm whose heart departs from the Lord. When we trust in man instead of God, second thing is, a part of that curse is our heart departs. It doesn't say we depart from the Lord. It says our heart departs from the Lord. Our heart speaks of our passion. Our heart speaks of our drive. Our heart speaks. It didn't say you depart from church. It didn't say you depart from Christianity. He says our heart departs from the Lord our heart is our passion our heart is our drive our heart is our motivation for God and for spiritual things and literally what he's saying is our passion our drive and our motivation for the Lord departs we have no drive and motivation towards spiritual things there is no drive to read the Bible there is no desire to pray when I got free time there is no desire to seek the Lord as a matter of fact I got to sometimes make myself even come to church. Why? Because my heart has departed from the Lord. So I'm trying to do spiritual things without a heart for spiritual things. Glory be to God. If we read our Bible and it's a task, if we pray and it's something that is frustrating for us, then perhaps, I'm not saying because you might be growing and you might be new, but I'm talking about the folks that have walked for, for God for a while. It is a validation and a fruit that our heart has departed. We have it. Our confession has it. But our heart has departed from the Lord. And some of you have been asking God, what's wrong? Why don't I want it like I used to? Why don't I feel like I used to? Why ain't I tapped in like I used to? God said it's because of where you started to put your trust. Because anytime you start putting your trust in man, your heart will depart. There's no way around it. How do I know if I'm trusting in man? My heart has departed from the Lord. 
Man, last thing I want to do when I got a break is pray. Amen. Look, there's a lot of things I want to do when I got free time. And ain't man one of them read the Bible. Right? It's some things I want to binge watch. There's some people I got to catch up with on social media. What is that evidence? I'm not talking about everybody. People that are growing, whatever. I'm talking about people who walk for, he said, your heart has departed. These are people who have already walked with God. Amen. He said, you don't need no other proof to know that you, you're beginning, the weight of your trust has begun to shift. And you're beginning to trust in man. That's why your heart has departed for the Lord. The more we trust in man, the farther our heart gets from God. Amen. So now, then on the other end, you have the person who does trust in God, right? My God. You have the one that does trust in God, right? In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 8, what's the flip side? The one who trusts in man, his heart departs from the Lord. There is no spiritual drive. But I decree and declare that God is resurrecting spiritual drive in the life of people. God is releasing personal fire back into people. God is quickening our spirit again. See, there is no quickening for spiritual things the more we trust in man. I lose that fire. I lose that first love. I lose that passion. I still come to church and I ain't denied God, but my heart really ain't there. There's nothing worse than if you're a coach or you're on a team and you're playing with somebody whose heart really ain't there. Amen. If you're a coach, you're coaching somebody and their heart really ain't there. You know it when you see it. It's like, man, you're playing. You out there letting these jokers run you over. You know what I'm saying? Man, you could do more. You ain't even hustling. Ain't nothing worse than a coach because they might be better than you, but my God, you could at least hustle. You could get back on defense. You could go and grab a rebound. Put your butt on somebody and box them out. This is coach talking. But when somebody's heart ain't there, they won't even do that. You sitting there watching these jokers get rebounds over you. You just letting them run by you. You ain't getting down and playing no defense. You ain't doing nothing. Your heart is departed. And so because of that, you're being defeated. Many times our defeat is because of the condition of our heart. We wind up getting blown out because the team played with no heart. How many battles have we lost? Because we didn't have enough heart to get up when God woke us up and pray. We ain't have enough heart when God was tell, calling us to fast, to fast. We ain't have enough heart. And we're letting ourselves get beat. Because we're in a battle without the heart. Let me tell your neighbor, you ain't got to get beat. You will not leave here defeated. Amen. The coach don't care how good you are. The coach don't care how many skills you have. The coach don't care if you're the best player on the team. And usually if we don't have your offensive input, we can't win. If you won't hustle, I'm going to pull you out the game. I'm going to put you on the bench because it ain't got nothing to do with your gift. It has everything to do with your heart. Be glory be to God. Because you cannot, you cannot make everybody as good. You can't share your goodness with everybody. Everybody ain't going to be able to shoot you like that, but you can share your heart. And they need to see the best player given the most heart. Amen? And then sometimes what happens to us is we wonder why we get sidelined. You're gifted, but your heart. And your heart will infect other people. So we got to keep you on the sideline until you get your heart back in this thing. You need to get your heart back in your praise. You don't have clap. You need to get your heart back in your service because you're going to pass that on to somebody else if I put you in the game. So the coach would rather the whole team, I would rather have the whole team suffer than the whole team be infected. Come on, I know, I know I got some sports people in here that know what I'm talking about. And I know some of the women just shaking their head and they don't know. Some do. 
Uh, oh, Pastor T, no. She got four boys. And I used to drag her everywhere with me playing basketball. My God. She know. Amen. Jeremiah 17, verse 8. The second characteristic of a believer who trusts in God is what? Look at what it says. They spread out their roots by the river. They spread out their roots. By the river. Come on. This is somebody who, 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 who trusts. Him. Now, remember, the one who doesn't trust in God, heart departs from the Lord. The one who does trust in God, their roots are spread out. You know what roots are? Roots is the part of the plant that's beneath the surface. It's, it's the part of the plant that's reaching, but nobody's seeing. It speaks of personal devotion. It speaks of secret pursuit. It speaks of secret desire for God. It speaks of seeking God in the secret place. But roots are reaching even when we ain't seeing. He says when you trust God, you'll reach when ain't nobody looking. You'll go after him beneath the surface. You'll be in secret seeking your God. You'll be in secret running after your God. You'll be in secret. You'll spread out your roots. You'll spread it out. You'll cover much ground in intercession. You'll cover much ground in prayer. You'll cover much ground in faith. You'll spread your roots out and nobody will know. The reason why you stand so tall when they see you is because you spread it out your roots. When you trust God, you have a provocation for personal devotion. God blesses you with that. Your instinct ain't necessary to cut on the TV when you got free time when you trust God. Not that, not that you're disciplined, but because when you trust him, that's a part of your blessing. He'll bless you to do what most folk won't. He said, I'll, let, I'll, I'll bless you to spread out your roots. Amen. Somebody shout, I trust, I trust God. So the individual who doesn't trust God, their heart departs from the Lord. But the individual who does trust God is a man after God's heart. That's the difference between blessing and cursing. Amen. Everybody follow me. Let's go to this next one. I'm almost done. Glory be to God. Jeremiah 17, verse 6. This is the next curse. This is when we trust man. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good come. When we trust in man, a part of the curse is we're allowed to see. We're not allowed to see when we have it good. He shall not see when good come. I'm going to say that again. When we don't trust God, when we trust man, a part of the curse is not to see when we have it good. You shall not see. Y'all see it? When good comes. There are people who won't see when they have a good job and quit. They won't see when they're in a good relationship and mess it up. You ever been around somebody like, man, what was you thinking about? You got it good. You had all them benefits. You had all that. that. Why did you quit that job? But if you, if you trust in man, you won't see when you have it. What? They won't see when they're in a good place. They won't see when they're in a good situation and they'll walk away from it. Amen. There are some of, there are kids in here right now that have parents that you have it good with. You got it good with your parents. And because you trust in man, in other words, you're trusting in, in the TikToks and the videos and the friends, you're rebelling against your parents. And you're messing up having it good. And you don't even know. But when you trust in man, you won't know. You won't know that you had it good until you don't have it good anymore. And then you have to look back and say, man, I had it good. I wish I could get a witness up in here. I know I ain't the only one that trusted in man, came out of a situation, had to do what somebody else would have did for me, had to look up and say, man, I had it. When we trust in man, 
we won't see when we have it good. We'll only see that it was good after we've already left it. We'll only see that it was good after we already quit. Amen? That, that, that curse won't allow us to keep anything good. Amen? Then it goes on to say this, because we got to come under this curse. We, we got to make sure we don't trust man. Look, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you got it good. Stop treating the place where you are like it's so bad. You got it good. Some of you don't have the job you want to have. Stop treating it like it's bad. You still got it good. Some of you ain't where, living where you want to live. Stop treating it like it's bad. You don't understand. You got it good. It's not what you want, but it ain't bad. And if you trust in man, man will tell you that you get better through dissatisfaction. But God says you get promoted through being humble. You don't get frustrated at where you are to get better. You humble yourself where you are to get promoted. But if you trust in man, you'll try to use anger for promotion. You don't use dissatisfaction for promotion. Godliness with contentment. Be content where you are, but say, God, when you're ready, open the door. But where I am, I'm going to serve Joseph. I know I am in the king's prison, but I'm going to be the most excellent servant in the king's prison until I'm promoted over all the other prisoners. No matter where I go, I recognize humility is promotion because I trust in God. I don't trust in man that tells me I got to be tired of where I am to move on to something better. I got to be tired to move on. I can go from glory to glory and faith to faith and be happy to go to happier, to be joy to go to more joy. I'm not going to trust man's way. I don't complain my way into a new blessing. Amen. I don't talk about how tired I am. I'm doing it to get to do something else. You're cursed. You're trusting man. That's how man gets promoted. God don't do it that way. That's why it gets unbearable. Amen. Because you didn't talk about it so much that it's actually worse than what it is. Let me ever tell you that, but it ain't that bad. Look at everybody, we got it good. Come on. How many of you got to go home today and open up a can of salmon? Glory be to God. If I could just take a trip around the restaurants after service today, Joker's going to be at Western Sizzling. Joker's going to be at, oh, uh, um, boy, you should have saw that face. Like, mm -mm. I forgot. Y'all even got it better, better. Y'all just telling on yourself. You ain't got it bad. You don't be a red lobster. Longhorn. Getting a cowboy steak. Caramelized. You even know what caramelized means now. I'm talking about you got it bad. You ain't got it bad where you are. You ain't got it bad right now. You're about to ruin a good place trying to get better and go to worse. Because you're doing it man's way. Amen. Bless the Lord. You shall go out with joy and be led out with peace, the prophet says. I'm not going to go because I'm mad. I'm going to go happy. Amen. Bless the Lord. And so he says then this. So uh, 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 the next part of trusting in man, come on, y'all still with me? For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes. But do what? Inhabit the parched places. Inhabit the dry places in the wilderness in a salt land not inhabited. They'll leave a good place to inhabit a parched place. He said when we trust in man, we'll leave a good place to inhabit a parched place. You ever talk to people who always seem like they're in a hurt place? They're in a hard place. They're in a transitional place. They're in a recovering place. 
They're in a, they're in a, 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 a weird place. They're in a strange place. They're in a stretching place. They're in a, 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 a crazy place. And I'm like, man, when are you in the right place? Are, are, are me and you ever supposed to be in the right place? Amen. Because if I follow your example, I'm going to be everywhere. My God, where can I go home? Hey Amen. I'm in a strange place. I'm in a squeezing place. I'm in a hard place. I'm in a heavy place. I'm in a confusing place. I'm in a don't know what to do place. I'm stuck between two places. I'm in the wilderness. I'm in the I'm in the cave. I'm in the dark. I'm in the my God. Where's the wizard that can take us home? I feel like I'm in the Wizard of Oz. Hey Amen. So they would tell you that, but you ain't got to be in all them places. When you recognize you left a good place. See, if you don't recognize a place for what it is, you wind up in a parched place. And you have to stay there because you denied you were in a good place before you got there. So God had to resist your promotion because you tried to promote man's way. So you winded up parched instead of blessed. You wind it up with more of a struggle instead of more of a blessing. And it's not because that God works that way, but if we try to be promoted another way because we trust in man. Amen. I'm sick and tired. I, I mean, I was in those too. Man, you, somebody get to preaching behind the organ and you're sick and tired. And they don't know all the hymn <laughs> that you've been through. But God saw it. Oh, yeah. Yes, he did. And boy, look here. We'll go. Ah! And then you watch them same one day. So where you at right now? Strange place, hard place, squeeze place, confused place. You still ain't in the right place. Because that ain't how you get there. Look at everybody tell you, that ain't how you get there. We don't use discontentment, complaining, and murmuring for promotion. I'm going to say it again. We don't use discontentment, complaining, and murmuring for promotion. That's, you're trusting in man when we're doing that. When we preach that behind a B3 organ, I promise you, I can know it's wrong. But if that joker hit the right note, I will twinkle my toe. God Almighty. Because they create something. I'm playing. I won't twinkle my toe for real. Bless the Lord. I'll be binding. I'll be binding. I'll literally be praying for folk in the middle. of Folk be dancing, shouting. I'll be praying for folk. Because they think they're dancing and praying into freedom and they're dancing more chains and bondage on themselves. And I'll literally be praying for folk in the middle of a lot of what we call church praise. Because I see the bondage on them. Amen. And it's sad to think they think that they're actually going to get better doing what they're doing. Amen. And they're going to leave here worse. Amen. So, so he says here, they end up in a, pro, a parched place. They literally end up in a place not inhabited. They end up staying in places don't nobody want to be. Amen. What? People who trust in man are most comfortable in places nobody wants to be in. Nobody always wants to be in a hard place, but you're comfortable there. You're always there. Why are you always there? It's like you like being there. It's like you're comfortable there. It's, you know what I'm saying? What is in the world? You like that? It said it's a place not inhabited. Now, watch the shift of the blessing, though, for those who trust in God. Watch this. And I'm closing. It says in Jeremiah 17, verse 8, he said, but those who trust God, this says they shall not see when he comes. Do y'all see that? I'm about to shout right now. In the, do y'all see that? Do you see where it says, but those that trust in the Lord shall not see when he comes. The man or the woman that trusts in the Lord shall not see when he comes. Trusting in God gives us power over pressure. 
God, I wish I could talk it. It doesn't say they won't see no problems. They just won't see the heat. See, y'all hear what I'm saying? We'll be delivered from seeing the challenges of the trials in a way that brings us under stress and anxiety. Trusting in God gives us the ability to face the fire without seeing the heat. In other words, you can't tell we under pressure. You can't tell that there's anything going on in our lives because we're dealing with the issue but we ain't seeing the heat why because we trust in God glory be to God in other words when we trust in God we're one of those hard sleepers anybody ever been a hard sleeper that woke up in the morning and it looked like Noah Noah's ark came it rained all night and then they say this storm last night and you look back and say this storm I must have slept through the whole thing that's those that trust in God there are storms that come and they don't even realize they were there oh that was supposed to be a challenge for me oh that was supposed to confuse me oh that was supposed to stress me I didn't even see the heat blessed is the man that trusts in God he will not see when heat comes hallelujah it's getting hot but I'm cool your neighbor tell your neighbor it's getting hot but I'm cool because I trust in God. All you have to do to shift into the blessing of trust is make up in your mind you're going to trust. This ain't no long, elongated process. If you're not in a place where you're trusting God, well, then all it takes is a split second to say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to trust God. I'm going to repent. I'm going to shift. I'm going to bring my trust from in front of man and I'm going to bring it back underneath God. So the man that trusteth in man can't see when good comes. But the man that trusteth in God can't see when he comes. Hallelujah. Goes on to say that his roots run deep. That he shall not see when, when, when he shall not see drought. Come on, that's a good one. He shall not see drought. In other words, if, if, if there's a lack around them, they don't see none of it. If, if things, if the market is crashing, not their personal market. Come on, if, if, if people are in debt, not them. Glory be to God. They, 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 they shall not see drought and they shall bear fruit in every season. Ain't that a blessing? They shall be productive in every season. They shall be able to manifest something in every season. They shall be able to have something in every season. They shall be able to move into something in every season. They shall be able to possess something in every season. But a lot of people say, man, dance because it's your season. Well, even when it's not, I'm in season. See, this is a time where we don't have to wait for our season to get a blessing. But he says they get blessings in every season. So even when I'm out of season, to the average folk, I look like I'm in season because I bear fruit in every season. I'm blessed in the winter, spring, summer, fall, and due season. All five seasons are my season. Is there anybody here that's willing to say, it is my season? All seasons. All seasons are my season if I trust in. The living God. Everybody stand to your feet. Shit it up behind him. Shit it up behind him. Shit it up behind him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Some men trust in chariots and other in horses. But me and you shall remember the name of our God. Whew. God said, I came here today 
win back your trust. I came here today to get the trust of my people back. I need you to trust me because I'm ready to bless you. I need you to trust me because I'm ready to break some curses off of you. I need you to trust me because I'm ready to put you in the right place. I need you to trust me because I'm ready to extend my mercy, my grace, and my favor towards your life like I never have. God, deal with every part of our lives that trust in man and not trust in God. God, I'm ready to bring my heart back to the Lord. God, I'm ready to stop allowing flesh to be my own heart. God, I'm ready to stop running from good places. I'm tired of looking back and saying, man, I had it good. I want to learn how to stay planted in good places. Until those places bring forth everything you have planned for my life. God, give me grace to trust. I want to let you, I want to help you understand something right now. That there is no trust without a trial. Some of you are in the process of birthing trust even as I pray. Even as I pray right now. God said, I need you to be able to rely on my strength, my ability, and my integrity. That if I said it, it is so. That I'm not a man that I should lie. I need you to begin to make decisions according to that reality. I need you to begin to not be moved in spite of the contrariness of the situation or its intensity and be planted. Whew. God, I'm ready to move from trusting man to trusting the true and living God. I didn't see it. I didn't know it. My heart deceived me. But I see it through your word. Your word has made it clear today. And I'm ready to bring my heart before the presence of the living God and allow him to minister to my heart. So you're here today. And you sense the call for prayer under the canopy of that revelation. I want you to come for prayer.